Their shared passion for the game remains timeless and the pursuit of gridiron glory unquestioned. But their personalities are as different as night and day. Alabama imposes its will with brute force and an unflinching discipline. Auburn's success is rooted in the sleight of hand and a soaring spirit thanks to the occasional wing and a prayer. A miracle in turned to hair! A miracle in turned to hair! Even in the most benign of times, this is a rivalry that is forged much like the iron itself in smoldering cauldrons, filled with emotion and intensity. But these are no ordinary days. For the first time ever, Alabama plays Auburn in a winner-take-all showdown. And to the victor go the spoils. A trip to the SEC championship game and the possibility of so much more. This is the 78th Iron Bowl. is a huge gathering of fans outside Jordan-Hare Stadium this afternoon. While the Tigers make their traditional Tiger walk to come inside Jordan-Hare. A small group of vocal Alabama fans here to cheer on the undefeated Crimson Tide and their head coach, Nick Saban. Inside Jordan-Hare, all the pageantry that makes life in the SEC so special, but this one this afternoon, especially so. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. It's the 78th Iron Bowl featuring Alabama, number one, and Auburn, number four. Let's take a quick look at what is at stake today. First of all, for the first time ever, it's a winner-take-all game between these two. The winner will play in the SEC Championship next week against either Missouri or South Carolina. But in a broader fashion, take a look at the BCS standings released last Sunday. Alabama on top, Florida State, Ohio State next, and then Auburn almost unbelievably in the number four position. Gary Danielson, we've been uh, listening to people all all week long and talking about pressure who's got the biggest amount of pressure in this game well it's different for both teams and it may shift back and forth and we love these pressurized game with high consequences and obviously we got one but I think it's going to start out with Alabama in this football game when you're trying to go a three-peat for the national championship you're going to have to go through Auburn your rival yes at the beginning of this football game all the pressure starts with Alabama but it shifts throughout the game because the Auburn team comes here loose at the start of the game. They're all smiles. Their fans are saying, we survived. We've got another life. But, you know, late in this football game, if they look up at that clock and they have a chance to win, it may shift over to them. A crowd of about 90,000 now settling in. Well, settling in is perhaps not the right phrase. The passion in this place is enormous. This is the 78th meeting between these two. The series started in 1892, but was suspended from 1907 to 1948. Now, Alabama has had its way in the last five years. They've won four. The teams did not play, as you see, from 08 to 47 and the last four winners here have won the BCS National Championship. First on the field. Simultaneously, here come the Tigers of Auburn.
Let's go down to Tracy Wolfson with Nick Saban. Thanks a lot, Vern. Coach, we know the hype that went into this one. We know how loud this stadium can be, but we also know how many big games your team has played and how can that help you here today? Well, you know, I think the big thing for our players, a lot of motion in this game, we got to stay focused on what we need to do to execute. Everybody do their job, play with discipline, be physical, play the way we play. I mean, that's, and we got to do it for 60 minutes in the game. So that's what we got to do, and it's tough in this environment, but that's what we got to do. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. And they have elected to go on offense. It just could not be a more perfect day. A slight breeze out of the east, 55 degrees, and partly cloudy skies. Christian Jones, who opened the season with a 94-yard kickoff return against Virginia Tech. But the man who is kicking off for the Auburn Tigers is Cody Parkey. He leads the country in touchbacks, but this will not be one of them. It's Jones. And a positive way for Alabama. Three wides, top of the screen. That's Vogler, the tight end, who sets tight right. McCarron out of the spread. The handoff to Yeldon. Huge hole up the middle. What a start for the... Jalston Fowler is tight to Vogler on the left side. Yeldon, the only running back. He gets it. Comes left, good penetration. Driven down. Yes. It's Jake Holland and Robinson Teruzzi. Fourth down. One of the questions was, could the undersized Auburn defensive line stand up to the strength of Alabama? On that third and short, they did. Remember, Vern, in the LSU game, LSU stopped them twice. On that third and short, they did. Remember, Vern, in the LSU game, LSU stopped them twice on third and short, forced Nick Saban to do a fake punt. They've had trouble third and short. Cade Foster for the season, 11 of 12. This is from 44, McCarron the holder. Didn't That's going to go left. Surprise starter. He gets the start in place of Trey Mason. And he picks up 14. The tackle made by Ha Ha Clindix. Jay Prosh got another good block. And for Auburn, you don't know if it's a rundown or a pass down. Right. Take the reverse. Marshall oh. chased. Let's it go deep, wide open, incomplete. Guess who? Ricardo Lewis. Now the pass was a little to the right. A little to the right. He was open by 15 yards on the play. A complete bust by the Alabama defense. Watch this. Ha ha, Clinton Dix was back there. Let him run right by him. Nobody on the field. The right side of the Alabama offensive line. He's matched up against Austin Shepard McCarron. Norwood can't hang on. It was inaccurate, though. He had him wide open, and McCarron did not put the ball on the chest of the receiver. 7.3. Chris Davis has a punt return. Oh, it's bobble. Um, tipped. How about that? Davis hops up. My goodness, he dropped the ball. Is Alabama tight or what? Ryan Smith is going, my goodness. What was I doing? I should have blocked it. He goes to hold it. Now watch him just drop it. You know, Ryan Smith delayed and then almost he tipped it, but he should have eaten it up. Yes. Third and 18. Bit of a low snap. Marshall rolls out to his right. Drills and got him. Sammy Coates, how do you do? 
in the orchestrated play, the called play, nothing there. But Nick Marshall gets outside the pocket. That's the break. Marshall, big hole. Collins chases him and can't catch him. And Nick Marshall has scored the first touchdown of the ball game. 45 yards. play Trey Mason is being read by CJ Mosley on the play you run the play just as we showed it before the keeper Mosley runs himself out of the play doesn't even have to be blocked a wide open hole and nobody's going to catch this guy he's an elite athlete McCarron across the middle, crossing pattern, white, short. Well, let's see. They're spotting it right at the line. Yeah, Jonathan Mincy made a nice tackle on the play. It's a trademark play, crossing routes. Hit him. Mincy makes the tackle, but it is fourth and very short, and they're going to line up in punt formation. Rear is a defensive back at Georgia, dismissed from the team, took the J.C. route at Garden City. Mason. Trey One of the things first. that you can watch in this game is running the ball. We can't lose patience and try to make big plays. Just stop the run. Gary's talking about Ellis Johnson. Here's a deep ball right side. He's got him open. Incomplete. Amari Cooper and Jermaine Whitehead it looked like Cooper had a half a stride. He did. I thought A.J. waited too long on this pass. Watch how Amari Cooper never has to accelerate. He has to slow exactly the way they want to do it on offense. Let's see if Alabama can answer. Blitz coming. Play action. McCarron's down. Dave Wright came right up the gut on him that time. It was a blitz. I think that's Gabe right there. Yes, he gets handed off, a missed assignment by the offensive line. It was just a middle linebacker blitz, and the Alabama offensive line did not Fowler is the lead blocker here in the fullback row. Yeldon, number four, is the deep back. That's Vogler in motion. Second and goal. Play action, McCarron loves it. Caught, Fowler, touchdown. That's Jalston Fowler's seventh catch of the season. Bray number four, top of the screen. This is Uzuma up on the line in the slot, and the pass goes to him. Boy, he is popped. Jerry Williams was there, and so was C.J. Mosley. But Uzuma held on. It's a gain of 10. Boy, this is very close, by the way. Hits him, I think, in the arm and the chest, though. Big slant. Yes, yes. good placement. Yep. Good placement by Mosley. It was, uh, we had a chance to chat. Here's the play. <laughs> Left side, Mason. Commissioner Mike, out. Oh, is it down or out? It's going to be close. Sure is. Uh, yes. Yeah, Landon Collins. Recovers the fumble. It's going to be very close. Landon Collins caused it, I believe, by ripping it. Yes, that ball's out. That's yes. going to be held up. Alabama football. Agree. What a job by Collins. CJ. Top of the screen. O.J. Howard, the tight end, starts this way, then goes back left. They feed it to Yeldon. He is caught behind the line. Casanova McKenzie. Casanova McKenzie. Oh, Casanova McKenzie, number eight from the backside, ends up making the play. Cyrus Quanjo, number 71. Kind of strips him from behind while he's blocking. Yeldon. Ten at the 20 in a tie game blitz. 
Up the middle, good pick up by Yeldon. That's caught, touchdown, Kevin Norwood, Mr. Reliable. Yeldon is the running back, three to the wide right side. Yeldon goes left, got three away. of them. Yep. That formation is giving Auburn problems. They Why do you Lined up against Austin Shepard. Shepard, that's tipped, and it's caught by Norwood. Now he's loose inside the 30. Wow. Be darn. First and 10 after Kevin Norwood's catch. Kenny Bell is on the field for the first time. He's a speedster number seven. They run the reverse with Amari Cooper. O.J. Howard with a huge block, and Cooper wow. diving for the end zone. Did he get in? They're calling it a touchdown. First and goal. Yeldon is the running back. Vogler will lead the way. Yeldon. Touchdown, Alabama. In the early going, there's Uzuma. That's Mason over right guard. Into the uh, arms of Trey DePriest with the tackle. Out of timeout. See, look at that positive play. Just mash it up there. Trust your offensive line. First down, breaks a tackle, breaks another. Caught from behind by Jonathan Allen, number 93. You know, Alabama's known, as we've said, as one of the best tackling teams in college football. But the backs for Auburn make people miss. That was a 42-yard gain. Here's another gallop for Trey Mason. And I'll tell you, they'll roll it and roll it and run plays. Mason out. Cameron Artis Payne seeing action. Here's Marshall. Directs his blockers. That should be a touchdown. It is. <laughs> Now that's Auburn football. Start out with a run, break some tackles. And that time did the ball get passed. He puts it into his right hand. All you got to do is break the plane. New holder for Auburn, Stephen Clark. They're going to review the play. Nick Marshall, second touchdown on the ground in this one, first from 45. I'm wondering, did he go out of bounds, or did he get the ball passed into the end zone? Certainly his feet are in bounds. Yes. Now, did the football get yeah. inside? Remember, there's an... At Alabama, there's number 50, Dismukes. Low snap. They feed it. To Trey Mason, touchdown. So both calls proved to be inconsequential. Right. That's about two of the closest ones that I've seen. How about Trey Mason on that drive? Breaking tackles, his big run. And then he finishes it off. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> That's Somehow. The, the dressing to go with the turkey. <laughs> yes. Well, recall that Ryan White normally. Second and 15. Draw play. Yeldon. Caught and dropped. Jeremy Jones. Jonathan Jones. Number three. Alabama took a timeout here. Third and long. Yep. Time out. Thanks a lot. And coach, Alabama seemed to find their rhythm there, but a huge touchdown drive. What kind of statement was that in terms of making that going into half? Yeah, that was big. You know, once we get an initial first down and we can play fast, you know, we play pretty good. So that's going to be the key to the second half. Well, your team has found ways to win in the second half in the fourth quarter. How much will you bring that up going into the locker room? Yeah, that, that's big. You know, if it's a close game in the fourth quarter, I like our chances. Thanks a lot, Vern. 
you seem to have gained your rhythm there, but then you let up a big drive. What happened? Well, we just didn't play very well in defense. They ran a counter on us three times in a row. We never closed and spilled it. So we just got to execute better. And, you know, offensively, we got to throw and catch the ball better. And, you know, everybody's got to do their job. That, that's what it comes down to. And we haven't played with the kind of energy and enthusiasm we need to to win a game like this. Thanks a lot. All right, Tracy, thank you. The last six SEC games that they've lost, they did not win the turnover margin. The difference in the game is the turnover so far. Alabama did score off that turnover. Here's Marshall up the middle. C.J. Mosley is there. DePriest was in the neighborhood. For the Auburn Tigers, trailing by seven. Mason skips outside, turns the corner. Collins shoves him out of bounds. And Gary, let's take a look at the halftime trends. Well, as Nick said, and I think he's right. You know, it's the little things that you got to do. 21-14, opening drive, third quarter. Coach to the top, up there. Marshall drills it. Uzuma. Uzuma. Touchdown, Auburn. They love the tight ends. Number 18 and 81. They love the tight ends. And the big receiver's in the red zone. He's up against Aaron Jones. Hitch and go. A little bit of a grab, but a perfect throw. What a drive by Auburn. That's Uzuma's eighth catch of the year, but his third touchdown. And Auburn within an extra point try of tying it up. Uzuma, high school quarterback, six foot four. Jones, maybe 5'10". For Alabama. Three man rush. McCarron shakes the tackle, pulls up and throws it away. Punting situation. D Ford with pressure. Well, they initially rushed three and then brought a linebacker, but I think it was D Ford right here that put over eight yards per play the last two drives. And they have a first down 10 and a tie game at the 22. Marshall up the middle, look at him elusive with a big gain on first down. Alex Kozan with the lead block. He sure did. Fit it really nicely, didn't he? But he's been mesmerized. They're running around him and through him and they're blocking him. Marshall takes off left. Down, he's out of bounds. Look at him get the corner, though. Yep. When he was being recruited, the scouting report on Nick Marshall was an elite athlete, basketball. The throw. No, he won't. Mosley hauls him down. But it's a gain of 11. That's Fowler in motion. He'll line up just to the right of McCarra. Yeldon, nothing. Robinson Therese, number 27. Yeah, Ryan Smith and Therese. Remember, Auburn runs a 4 2 5. Ryan Smith, a safety, guesses, and Robinson Therese answers the other side of it. McCarran, two yards into the end zone. McCarran deep right side. Man open, Amari Cooper. 10 at the 22 and a half. Low snap. McCarron picks it up, goes in the end zone. He's got a man open and he drops it. Amari Cooper had both hands on it. I think Jonathan Mincy might have stripped it. I'm really? not sure. One on one coverage. Vern called to a low snap. Mincy gets turned around. Does he come back in? And I'm not sure if he dropped it or I not. I tell. cannot tell. No, he dropped it before Mincy got there. Suburb of Dallas Fort Worth. Oh, boy. Little things turn into huge things.
this. He's had this nightmare before, hasn't he? One of four in the game of the century for that year, at least. That was LSU's win over Alabama, 9-6 in overtime. Down the sidelines, Corey Grant. Well, Corey Grant is from Opelika High School right near here at Auburn University. He was going to... Play action, McCarron, how about this decision? Going deep, Amari Cooper is there, has it, loose, down the right side, there are no flags, and that is a 99-yard touchdown, McCarron, Cooper, Alabama leads. Stop. Can Auburn get the stop? McCarron, Yeldon, he they did got the not stop. get it. Yes, they did, back to back. True freshman Carl Lawson. Well, when your kicker makes you worry, you go for it. Carl Lawson comes off the block and makes the play. How about that? Splits off wide to the right. Cooper, top of the screen. Just a four-man rush again. McCarron is hit as he lets it go to be fourth down. Gabe Wright, number 90. Pressure by number 55, Carl Lawson. Fourth down. Wow. Man, that is a pass rush from Gabe Wright. Now it's, a what, about a 45-yard field yeah. goal? From 44 and 33. Well, everybody would forgive him if he makes this one for Alabama. The Auburn's fans say, come on, one more wide left. Cole Mazza snaps it. A.J. McCarron holds it. Cade Foster kicks it, and it's going to be wide left. It's blocked. It's blocked. Dereezy Robinson blocked it. Ryan Smith picks it up, and the nightmare continues for Cade Foster. It was blocked up the middle. Following the play, dead ball, personal foul, 89 of the kicking team. 15 yard penalty, first stop. Twenty-eight, twenty-one. winner take all. DePriest almost he broke it. Uh, the first down. Pardon, Mason. Yep, they're going to go to Mason on third down. He's a third down machine. And they hustle. First down and 10 at the 40. Marshall keeps it, tries to get around the edge, tips it out. It's caught by Sammy Coates. Strolls in. Touchdown. Auburn. The third part of the triple option, right at the last second. Nick Marshall saw Sammy Coates. Hardly blame the Alabama defender on that one. He thought for sure Marshall was keeping it. Cody Parkey, we are tied. Here comes Alabama's Hail Mary. Yeah, no, nope, they're, they're not. They yeah, are. Yeah. Did he get out of bounds? He did. Uh, Apparently. No, no. Here's Matt Austin. After review, the runner's foot touched out of bounds at the 39 yard line with one second on the clock. Clock will be reset to one second. It'll be first and 10. Well, if anyone should know the lesson of knocking it down, should it not be the Auburn defensive backs? The small amount there is is at his back. 
Mandel will hold it. Now they've officially made it 57 yards. Remember, a blocked kick can go the other way, too. He's got to be careful and get it up. On the way. No, returned by Chris Davis. Davis goes left. Davis gets a block. Davis has another block. Chris Davis. No flags. Touchdown, Auburn. An answered prayer. another look you know what we need to do is come back here more often these are the two most unbelievable finishes a force deep field goal and now Alabama does not have athletes on the field they've got offensive linemen on the field and once Chris Davis turns the corner the only thing that was going to stop him was he fell down it was a and kick. Yes, it was. But a big gamble. I thought maybe a block this could happen. Who would have dreamed that this, because there's no athletes on the field for Alabama. They got all fat guys. Mandel places it down. Griffith. As Gary said, it's a decent kick. Now, it will officially go into the books as a 100-yard return with a missed field goal because the NCAA does not measure from deep in the end zone. Burn for Auburn, 2013. It will always be remembered as the season every Auburn fan dreamed but never believed has happened. is with Gus Malzahn. Just this atmosphere right now, he can't even really hear what I'm saying, I'm sure. Yeah, but it, what can you say, just two weeks in a row here yeah. at Jordan Harris Stadium and coming out with this win, so important. It's really unbelievable. I said earlier, if it's close, I thought we were going to win. Our guys are resilient, and I couldn't be more proud of right now. The biggest turnaround in SEC history, and now you're on your way to the SEC championship. How proud are you of your team today? Hey, it's got to be one of those dream seasons. We got better every week. We're playing our best ball right now, and I'm real excited. What was going through your mind on that final field goal there and the return as it was happening? Yeah, we just talked about it. I didn't know if he had the legs, so we put our play return back there. Chris Davis took it to the house. The place went nuts. Well, it was a great move. Congratulations. Enjoy every minute of it. Thank you. For the field goal attempt, boy, so many things in this game, so many decisions. Nick Saban not going for a field goal, made a seven-point game. Here he goes for a field goal, and Chris Davis turns it upside down. Brandon Fulsh got a great block on the return. Ryan Smith got a great block on the return. Jonathan Mincy makes the only tackle on Chris Davis. Chris, they wanted to hoist you on their shoulders and carry you away, but I wouldn't allow them to. Gus Malzahn just said 
to us that he had a talk right before that field goal. What did he say to you guys? Uh, he just told us, you know, watch the fake. And Coach, Coach Cheese made the decision to put me back there and catch it. And when I caught it, I just ran, tried to make something happen for the team. What can you say about this turnaround, what you experienced last year in the Iron Bowl, and what you're experiencing now? You know, we just stayed together. We fought through adversity. You know, this team is relentless. And together was our thing coming into this year. And that's what we did. How much are you looking forward to that SEC championship game next week in Atlanta? We'll be looking forward to it. We're going to go this week and prepare for whoever we got to play. And we know it's going to be a tough game, but we'll pull it out. Good luck. Enjoy the moment right now. Thank you. Talk for a while that we might have. A 99-yard pass for Alabama is the Napa Auto Parts right. play of the game. <laughs> Guess what? Here is Rod Bramlett for the second time in two weeks with his call of the last play of the ball game. Well, I guess if this thing comes up short, he can field it and run it out. All right, here we go. 56-yarder. It's got, no, does not have the leg. And Chris Davis takes it in the back of the end zone. He'll run it out to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 45. There goes Davis. Oh, my God. Davis is going to run it all the way. 